Hey, what's going on everyone? Greg here. And there is one thought, one prevailing thought that I have had since WWDC that has been unable to escape my mind. And that is thinking, what will these first custom ARM-based Apple Silicon Macs look like? And what sort of features will Apple be placing in it? Well, as I discussed in my Mac OS Big Sur video, I think the user interface actually provides a lot of clues as to some features and directions Apple might be leading towards with their first computers run on their own A-series chips. So for this video, I'm gonna go over some of the rumors that we are seeing for new Macs, and also some of my own speculation on what sort of features and priorities Apple will have when they are making their own chips for the Mac. First, let's talk about the chipset because that's a feature we know is coming for sure. So basically, Apple is going to be including custom versions of their own A-series processors into their next line of Macs. And actually, there is this technology already existing in a version of the Mac that is only being shipped to developers. This takes place in the form of a Mac Mini. This Mac Mini comes with the A12Z processor, the same one found in the latest iPad Pros, with also 16GB of RAM and a 512GB solid state storage drive. As we already know from our own testing, the A12Z is a crazy powerful processor that outclasses not only the MacBook Air, but also the 13-inch MacBook Pro in some regards and should be pretty powerful even for high-end Mac applications. However, even with this chip's power, I don't think it will be the one Apple ultimately ships into any upcoming Macs. First of all, the chips they put inside now is no indication of what the final product will include. Back when Apple transitioned from PowerPC to Intel, Apple included a low-powered Pentium processor in their development kits. However, no Macs actually ever shipped with that Intel Pentium power processor. Furthermore, on a recent interview between Craig Federighi and John Gruber of Daring Fireball, and I'm paraphrasing a little bit, but Craig basically said, we are shipping the A12Z, that won't be an indication of what these final Macs will look like, and this is basically what Apple can do when they aren't even trying. And that's pretty much a bold statement. They're basically just saying, hey, let's just ship the lowest powered version of this A12Z processor, show developers how great this chip is, how much they can take advantage of it, and you know what? By the time we're ready to ship our real Macs with our real custom processor, processors in them, they're even going to blow that away. I also think we can learn a lot about Apple's future direction with the Mac if we take a look at this development kit and look at the ports on it. For example, this R Mac Mini has two USB-C ports and two USB-A ports, with also an HDMI port. These ports give us an indication of what Apple will include in their R Macs, because as you might have noticed, there's no Thunderbolt 3 ports on this Mac Mini. The reason for this is because Thunderbolt 3 is an Intel technology that runs on Intel's chipsets. However, even though Intel may license Apple to use this Thunderbolt 3 technology for their future Macs, I also think that Apple might not include Thunderbolt technology at all, opting in favor to use the USB 4 standard. If you don't know, USB 4 is basically the same exact shape as USB-C and Thunderbolt 3, and basically has a lot of the same technologies as Thunderbolt 3 without requiring Intel licensing. Which means that it is capable of also connecting to a lot of things that Thunderbolt 3 can connect to. For example, it can connect to 4K, 5K, and 6K displays, as well as power external GPUs. Now again, technically this is the first Mac with that processor, but again, it is not available to everyday people like you and me, but we don't have to wait that long. During WWDC 2020, Tim Cook said that Apple plans to transition the entire Mac lineup to their own custom processors. And that we won't have to wait too long as Apple plans to ship its first custom ARM-based Mac by the end of this year with a full transition in only two years. As for what this future hardware might look like and what it might take the shape of, we actually have some pretty good indications on what the first ARM Mac might be, and that is largely thanks to Apple analyst Ming-Chi Kuo. 9to5Mac reported on June 21st, one day before WWDC, that Quo confirms that ARM chipsets will be at WWDC and that the first Macs with this ARM chip is going to be a 13.3-inch MacBook Pro and a 24-inch iMac. Quo goes on to say that he expects a 50% to 100% increase in power for Apple's ARM-based Macs. If we follow earlier reporting from Mark Gurman from Bloomberg, he says that Apple's first ARM-based Mac would feature a 12-core processor. For reference, the 13-inch MacBook Pro currently ships with a 4-core processor, and even the bigger iMacs and MacBook Pros 
currently ship with an 8-core processor. Not only should we expect power increases from the first Apple Silicon Mac, but we should also expect better advancements in areas like battery life. When you consider that iPads and iPhones have much smaller batteries than the Mac, but still manage to get pretty good battery life, you can imagine that it's not unreasonable to think a Mac will get at least 50%, if not 100% battery gains as well. This could result in a Mac that has multi-day battery life, so we could see increases going from what Apple claims to be 10 hours of battery life to 20 hours of battery life. Not only would battery life improve, but imagine the thermal performance that Apple will be able to get out of their own custom A-series chips. Think of something like the iPhone or the iPad and think about how thin and light those devices are and then realize just how powerful the latest iPad Pro is with an A12Z chip that it rarely even gets warm and that it doesn't even have a fan inside to cool it. Also, if we look at one of the slides at WWDC when Apple was explaining the benefits of using their own chips for the Mac, we can see that there's going to be other benefits besides battery life and thermal performance. I really believe Apple will be adding much more features when they get full control of the chipset. For example, Macs right now don't have good webcams and features like Touch ID are only enabled through Apple's T1 and T2 chips, which are basically ARM processors already inside these Intel machines. A full-featured Apple-made chip could mean even more features coming over to the Mac. For example, Face ID or even a 120Hz ProMotion display. Not to mention, thanks to in part to its power efficiency gains of ARM-based architecture, Apple would probably end up adding cellular 5G Mac laptops to future lineups. I also think we can learn a lot by looking at macOS Big Sur. For example, the redesigned rounded corners on the application windows look like they are destined for Macs with more bezel-less displays similar to the iPad Pro design. And because these application windows feature much more rounded corners, I also think that future Macs might also include rounded corner displays. We can also see some clues about something Apple said they wouldn't be adding to their laptop lineup, a touchscreen. Looking at elements in Big Sur like the control center, it's easy to imagine that Apple specifically redesigned the user interface for this version of macOS to eventually take advantage of a touchscreen display. Now that the iPad has a full keyboard and trackpad, why not bring over the touchscreen over to the Mac? Especially when these ARM-based Macs come out, they will be able to run almost all iPad and iPhone apps without any additional work from developers. Furthermore, a touchscreen display is also a chance for Apple to make that MacBook lid just a little bit thicker, which should result in better optics for a front-facing 1080p or maybe even a 4K webcam. So Apple could just take that chance to bring back the glowing Apple logo, which I'm sure a lot of people watching this video would be super happy to have. Apple might also be able to make their Mac laptops cost less. Apple pays a lot of money just to get those chipsets from Intel, and with Apple making their own chips, they don't have to pay anyone else to make them. So Apple could not only save money by using their own chips, maybe resulting in even lower cost MacBooks, but they could also take the money they're saving from buying those Intel chips and then incorporate some of those other features we talked about, like Face ID or a 120 hertz display. Now, taking all that in mind, what will the first ARM Mac be? Or might there be multiple at once? Now, the obvious target for the first ARM-based Mac is, of course, Apple's laptop lineup. Apple's laptop lineup far outsells their desktop lineup and is the most popular Mac with consumers. Quo even states that a 13.3-inch MacBook Pro would be the first device running on Apple's ARM processor. However, I think that might not be the only one we see launched. Now, we are still expecting an iMac redesign, and Tim Cook did something kind of unprecedented at WWDC when he said that Apple is going to still ship an Intel Mac later this year, and that they would ship the first ARM-based Mac by the end of this year. Lots of rumors say the new iMac is already ready to go, and there's rumors of a redesigned 24-inch bezel-less iMac with a bezel redesign and design language similar to that of the iPad Pro. As strange as this might be, Apple may have this iMac all ready to ship with existing Intel processors. However, I also think that even if Apple manages to ship this Intel Mac soon, I also think not only will we see the first ARM-based MacBook by the end of this year, I also think that Apple would be bold in this chip transition and eager to show us just how powerful their chips can be when unconstrained by battery life or the thermals inside of a laptop. Making a big splash with a desktop class ARM processor, something we really haven't seen quite yet, would be a huge moment for Apple, not only to introduce a more powerful mobile laptop option, but saying, we have the best computer chip in the world, beating out the likes of Intel and AMD. 
Apple changed the computing world with the original iMac, and it would only make sense to have that ARM iMac ready to go to introduce us to the next transition. That's why I think the first ARM Mac won't just be one Mac, it will be two Macs introduced in the form of something like a 13-inch MacBook Pro and also a redesigned iMac. That would be the boldest move for Apple to do to show that they are ready not only to replace their mobile division, but also really ready to replace their desktop class processors. And if we've learned anything about Apple from this WWDC 2020 presentation, they are really bold with that two-year timeline. But anyway, I wanna know what you think. What do you think the first ARM Mac will be in Apple's laptop lineup? And also what sort of features do you think it would have? If you like this video, make sure you give me a like. If you wanna see more from my channel, make sure you're subscribed. If you wanna help the channel out in any way, make sure you check out some of the links in the description. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you all in the next video. Take care everyone.